Hey everybody and welcome to the bullshit party! I need a flashlight! And in this one we're gonna be taking a closer look at the newly released Emperor Vector. As always we're gonna be taking a look at its exterior, its interior, the way it customizes, performs, handles and all that good stuff in Los Santos Customs and ultimately I'm gonna be telling you if it's worth it, uh, according to me that is. First off let's address the elephant in the room. I'm starting the video when it's dark because I wanted to showcase the lights of the vehicle. Other than that, this is the 360 rounded and it should be mentioned that the vehicle new costs 1.8 million dollars. It should also be mentioned that it's a two seater, so only you and a buddy can sit in it. It's based on the current generation Lexus RCF and this is the level of fender activity you can expect from it. And yes, I'm starting to regret the pink right about now. But hey, it wasn't my fault, the game offered it! But anyhow, as you can see the Rockstar design team were very faithful to the original vehicle. Or maybe you can't see because it's dark, I don't know. But in any case, that's the exterior of the vehicle. Not bad. I gotta say, I'm very excited for this one. And as I mentioned earlier, before we get into the interior, too late, uh, we're gonna show off the lights of the vehicle. And I gotta say, in my opinion, it looks awesome. Everything flows correctly and I especially like the brake lights. Or if you were French, you'd probably say that this vehicle is very Je m'appelle. And no, don't correct me in the comments. As for the interior, I believe it's unique to this vehicle, but it's nothing to write home about. But the way it sounds, on the other hand... It's very good and it's gonna get better, but for now let's see what type of drivetrain the vehicle sports. And I gotta be honest, I was a little surprised by this, because I believe this is the first vehicle from the car, meet, whatever DLC, that's all-wheel drive. And believe me, that's immediately apparent as soon as you start driving it. So with that useful piece of information, let's get going to Los Santos Customs where dreams go to die. I mean, puppies and rainbows. Anyhow, so my initial impressions of the vehicle, and it should be mentioned that this is the stock version of the vehicle that I'm talking about right now, is that it's very... very... very predictable in the way it handles. It's actually very nice. Very surprising, I gotta be honest. I was a little skeptical when I saw this as the new vehicle in the game. But so far, the only negative thing I can say about it is that it doesn't have brakes, like, at all. The brakes are literally there just to hold the calipers together. You'd have better success stopping Flintstone style than stopping with the brakes on this vehicle. But that aside, remember earlier when I told you that the sound the vehicle makes is incredible? Listen to this. It has this awesome crackle effect when you lay off the gas that I really, really like. But anyways, we're here at Los Santos Customs with no major... Scratch that? Uh, we're here at Los Santos Customs, where, uh, as I said earlier, good things happen. And here we are, finally in Los Santos Customs, and it should be mentioned that the Vector is a part of the sports car class category in GT Online. Did I say that right? Nah, who cares. And, as always, the first thing I'm gonna do is upgrade all the performance options up front, except for the armor, because I don't do that. And this is gonna allow me two things, first off to skim over all the customization options and see what I'm in for, and secondly to make sure that I don't forget anything at the end in terms of performance. And here we are, here are all the choices you have for a front bumper for the Vector. And that I already apologize for making the vehicle pink, well, I'm sorry. But anyway, let's go to the rear bumper options, where we see more pink and more options. But all in all, I'm really happy with what I'm seeing so far. And I have to say, all the vehicles that I've seen so far that have come out from the DLC have been at least decent. And just like every other vehicle that came out from the DLC except for the Porsche, you can customize the look of your engine. And again, I'm sorry for the pink. And as far as I can tell, all vehicles share the same customization options when it comes to customizing the engine. And the same can be said about the braces. I believe they're pretty much the same. And also kind of useless and pointless. But I'm getting off topic here. The next thing we're gonna choose for this vehicle is the new exhaust, and oh my god, we have a limited uh, number of exhaust options, which is kind of disappointing. But uh, hey, beggars can't be choosers, and I'm definitely a beggar. So moving on, and these are all the fender options that you can choose from. You can choose between ugly, stupid, and unpractical. So you guys know me, I chose stupid. And speaking of stupid, you can make your cart completely useless in the dark by deleting its headlights. Now, despite what you think of me, I didn't do that. I made my rainbowy and nice and shiny. And the hood latches or accessories are another thing that I believe is shared among all other vehicles in the DLC. Or at least that's been my observation. Now, the hood options are of course unique to this vehicle. 
And I gotta say, I was pretty bummed out that I didn't have a transparent hood for this particular one. And yes, I know, I always have something to complain about, but this is what doing a review actually entails. Right? Ooh, and speaking of complaining, this is the interior customization mods that you can put on your vehicle. Also known as burning money. Also known as flushing money down the toilet. Also known as... Well, you know what, you get the point. And the seats, I believe, are another thing that's shared among all other vehicles in the DLC. They're the same for each one of them. And I believe it's the same for the stupid steering wheel. I mean, for the steering wheel. And if you couldn't tell by now, I'm not a big fan of this customization, but I understand why it's here. People want to showcase their cars, they want to make them unique, they want to go to car shows and all that stuff. And oh my god, I can put a purple row cage in mine. Once again, guys, I'm very sorry that I chose pink. Wait, did I just call it purple a second ago? I'm stupid. But moving on, here are all the livery options you can choose from for this particular vehicle. You can put muscle car stripes on a Japanese vehicle. Yeah, that's right. As for the mirrors, you can put carbon on them, which is always a good thing. The license plate, we're gonna go with yellow and black, just like we always do. For the roof accessories, we're gonna go with... Uh, well, let's see now. We have something that looks very similar to what we originally had, but we need to pay $7,000 for it. Or we can choose one of the other roof spoilers that don't actually enhance the traction of the vehicle. Interesting. What to do, what to do. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna put a carbon antenna on my vehicle, just cause I like the look of it. And if you couldn't tell, I only had one coffee today. But don't worry, I'm gonna drink a second one before the next video, which is gonna be the podium vehicle. And if I don't forget, I'm gonna link it right here, if you wanna watch it. Or if I forget to link it, go to my channel and watch the new podium vehicle video. But back to this vehicle and this video, sure. the next and one of the final customization options we're gonna tackle is the splitter -z option. -z. And as you can see here, you have a lot of different choices. There is, as I like to say, something here for everybody. And speaking of something for everybody, here are all the spoiler options, which it should be said that it's the only visual customization that actually has some impact on the performance of the vehicle. It actually increases the traction just by a tiny bit if you select anything other than the stock option. Sun strips, stupid, and pink. The suspension is kind of interesting because the car is already really low and oh my god, I'm gonna ruin this vehicle. But uh, it's already pink, so who cares? And uh, I kind of like the wheels, so I think I'm gonna be keeping those for the time being. Which means the last thing before respraying the vehicle, finally, is gonna be changing the window tint. And I'm sorry to Lexus fans all around the world, I kind of ruined this one. Not with the color per se, but with pretty much everything. But uh, speaking of color, the color I chose for this was uh, an orangey one, I think. I don't really remember, even though I shot the video like 10 minutes ago. Yeah, there we go, sunset red or orange or whatever. As for the secondary color, we're gonna go with something classy. Very classy. Yellow. And you guys should be grateful that I didn't change the rims, because otherwise they'd be yellow as well. You're welcome. And of course I'm gonna change the interior color to match the secondary color. I don't need the dials on the dashboard to be a new color, so I'm not gonna do anything with the accent color. So we're done. And here we are, finally outside, and it's finally daytime. And we can finally admire at our Lexus. Okay, I can't say that with a straight face, I'm, I'm really sorry. And in case you were wondering, yes, the vehicle still has all-wheel drive. As for the way it handles and performs and all that good stuff after we completely upgraded the performance side of it, um, I don't want to say a big word, but it's probably my favorite vehicle to drive around with from the new DLC. Even though the engine doesn't sound as nearly as nice as it did before, Everything, brakes, stop speed, handling, acceleration is much, much better. And keep in mind, this car was no slouch before. But what makes it really special is that it's really predictive when you're trying to do something with it. For example, throwing it in a corner or something like that. It just behaves the way you'd expect it to behave. And that's probably due to the fact that it's an all-wheel drive vehicle. Now, when it comes to money, it costs a pretty penny. So, I definitely think this is a no-brainer if you just want a fun vehicle to customize and free roam with. The customization was on point and the way the vehicle handles is just way too much fun. On the other hand, if you're looking for a vehicle to race with, I don't know if this is gonna be the best one for you. Since it just came out and I don't know how it compares against other vehicles. But for free roaming, role playing and just having fun with it, I totally recommend it. It's totally worth it in my opinion. 
just don't make it pink. And uh, with that, I think it's time to be ending this one. Thank you so much to everybody that watched, hopefully you liked what you saw. If that's the case, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. And with all that, I'll be catching you all in the next one. Huh, funny thing, I don't remember where I parked.